What's going on guys? Pretty cool video in store for you today. I'm working on the FJ Cruiser again. I've taken a break from that 2JZ that I've been building for that car. It's not going in the FJ Cruiser, but I've basically been, I've got a build series going on on that slowly because just there's been a ton of things going on but basically i have a video that i'm putting up the same time as this video where i'm walking around and talking about that engine long video talking about all the stuff on that but in this video i'm going to be putting in this billet all aluminum thermostat housing to replace the plastic one that toyota has put in now a really quick note on the plastic one is not full plastic it's fiber reinforced plastic and if you're buying the oem one it's about 80 bucks that's from Toyota. And if you're buying an aftermarket cheaper one, the cheapest I've seen them is about $40 and you get what you pay for. People don't have a lot of luck with running the cheaper ones because they're just not made to the quality of the Toyota ones. With that said, the Toyota one is still plastic. It's fiber reinforced plastic, but at the end of the day, it's still plastic and it crumbles after about 15 years, depending on what environment you have it in. For that reason, I actually custom made my own billet thermostat housing which i'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about before i get to the install part but rest assured if you jump down to the progress bar of this video you will be able to jump around a different section of the video and you can look at the install or you can jump to the end of the video and you can look at how it looks on your engine but basically this is my fj cruiser thermostat housing this same video you can follow it for the 2005 to 2015 toyota tacomas that have the 4.0 liter v6 engine also known as the 1GR engine, which is the engine that's in this FJ Cruiser. I know it applies to that because I actually have the upper water pump inlet from the Toyota Tacoma on this engine because that's a tow package upgrade that I did last year. As you see, like these coolant hoses, I'll have to get those out of the way, but I put in my the oil cooler from the Toyota Tacomas to have the tow package. So I'm actually running that. So this uh, front housing, the, the water inlet, is actually from a Toyota Tacoma. It's a used part from a Toyota Tacoma. One of the ones that came with a tow package. I've got an install video on this if you wanna check it out. And there's my old <laughs> makeshift thermostat housing that this, I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about this. So if you don't care so much about this part and wanting to hear me talk about that, then feel free to jump ahead to the, to the billet install or to the end of the video. But basically, I made this one work. It is the cheapest possible thermostat housing that I could find because the original intention was just to bolt it onto the engine and just for a, just for a mock-up fitting, just to make sure that it fit. And then I was going to buy one of the more expensive ones, but I decided to plug some sensors into it to measure the pressure and the coolant temperature just to make sure there weren't any leaks and that the temperature stayed the same and everything. And it's been working for a year. So that thermostat housing is specifically made for a Honda K20 engine or a K24 engine. And if you don't know anything about that engine, it's a very, very, very popular Honda engine that's capable of about a thousand horsepower with appropriate mods. But the engine itself can handle that kind of power. And because of that, people swap it into Nissans, all kinds of cars it's been swapped into. I think, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's actually been swapped into a Lamborghini that needed an engine and people did a YouTube build series on that. It was Lamborghini or Ferrari or something. I saw something on that a while back, but it's a, it's a wildly popular engine. And because of that, it's been swapped into numerous different things. For that reason, you need a thermostat housing that's capable of having a swivel neck, which is this one that I bought, the all aluminum one. I ground down the edges so that I could make it fit. This is my FJ Cruiser housing that it bolts into. So I ground down the edges so that it would fit here the way the FJ Cruiser one does. And I, the Honda one came around here. All of that's been ground down so that it will fit. So this has been ground down so that nothing touches here. And this has been ground down. Nothing on the housing itself was ground down, but this itself was. The problem with it was I had to remove the studs. So I'm using bolts and the bolts are really difficult to get in and out. If I ever have to remove that, it is a pain to get it off the engine. Um, some little notes on <laughs> the poor quality of that thermostat housing. Basically, it's the cheapest one that I could possibly find. So it was $20 with a thermostat. So it came with some cheap Chinese thermostat that I would not, I would not have ever touched this FJ Cruiser engine ever in a million years. What I did was I ground down the edge of a Toyota thermostat that I bought, Toyota original thermostat from a 90s something. I ground down the edges so that it would fit. Similarly to how this one does, it's held in with a snap ring. 
So that one fits in there. The inlet here was a smaller diameter for the Honda engine. So what I had to do was I had to use an old bicycle tube, cut it to length, slit it over with the radiator hose so that I wouldn't have a larger radiator hose going on a smaller inlet. It hasn't been leaking because of that. It hasn't been leaking at all. There's a few little signs of leaking around the sensor ports, which are known to leak on this cheap one based off of the reviews that I was reading. So for that reason, I just put extra sealant on it whenever I seal it up. It also has a thicker base that's twice the thickness of this one. This is around 3 eighths of an inch, where that one is well over half of an inch. So it is difficult to slide into the housing where this one, the billet one, it just slides right in. It actually slid on easier then than this one does. It has an O-ring base to seal, uh, just like that Honda one that I used. This has an O-ring. Basically, I didn't expect this $20 Honda thermostat housing to last with one, me grinding it up, two, me putting a bicycle inner tube on it to make up the gap between the inlet and the radiator hose. Three, I was expecting it to, to leak around the swivel neck and it didn't leak around the swivel neck. It's been working. I even took the sensors out of it because I realized what's the, what's the point of leaving these, these sensors in it. It's just working fine. I trust that Honda one over this, especially now that it has an actual Toyota thermostat in it. It's just been a champ. There's a guy that reached out to me that said, hey, uh, our company started making these for the Tacomas and for the FJ Cruiser. We saw your video. If you wanted to go in online and buy this, this is, it's made by, it's Reaper Customs. It is a little pricier than the Toyota OEM thermostat housing, but you get the reliability of it. If you think like you're, you're out in the, in the Moab desert or you're out in the Arizona desert and you're, you're off-roading in this, the last thing that you want is these little crap plastic thermostat housings to, to break on you. Um, also, the reason I found out that this is a plastic thermostat housing is I was changing out my radiator to an all aluminum radiator, getting plastic out of the system because the radiator has plastic end caps. And then I saw that this was plastic as well. So that was when I started changing out my thermostat to the billet aluminum one, the Honda K engine one. This one, if you're worried, if you're wondering about the thermostat that came in it, uh, it's a Motorrad thermostat. So Motorrad is a really good brand. They've been making thermostats and radiator caps for a long, long time, probably longer than I've been alive. They've been making radiator caps and thermostats. This one doesn't have the little jiggly valve in it where my Toyota thermostat does. I want the little jiggly valve that should be facing in the northern position. Motorrad is still a good brand. I just prefer Toyota o OEM to every part that you can throw at me that's on the market. That's my stance. Um, yeah, so Toyota just makes amazing stuff. So in order to do this, of course, you have to drain out the coolant from the system. What I'm going to have to do, because I have this tow package from the Tacoma that's, that's mounted on the, on the FJ Cruiser, I've got to remove this to get this out of the way and probably this one also. So I'm just going to loosen those and then slide them out of the way. Um, these are just sensors that I'm using as plugs, but so you, that's, yeah. If you're taking off this, it's a lot easier than, than what I'm going to. So I'm actually going to put these studs back into this, uh, this housing just because it's, it's easier to get the nuts on, but like the one that's like down there in the very, very, very back on the bottom that's closer to the head, that's a more difficult nut to get onto the stud. And it's just as hard to get the bolt in place. And then trying to put the bolt in there without stripping it is, is just difficult. So I'm going to put the stud back in this housing. Um, but basically, this is a very straightforward install. You don't need to take out the fan shroud. I was able to put that fat thing in without removing the fan shroud. And it's, it's been fine. It's been sealed up. There's no signs of any coolant leaking around it. It's just dirty. And you can see the edge of my bike tube sticking out right there from where it's crammed in between the uh, the radiator hose and where it goes on that inlet yeah it's it's just it's been a solid little um solid little thing so uh one other little note is if you want to put a sensor you can put a sensor here um you can't really put a temperature sensor on this side of the thermostat and expect to get any kind of usable coolant information this is only going to show you coolant temperature on the radiator you can put a coolant pressure sensor here, which is what I would say that you could do, but the coolant pressure sensors are usually a little fatter. So it's going to stick up towards that bracket. So you may need to remove this bracket, but that's basically 
yeah, uh, I, I really like this. I like that it has this, um, the, the option for me to put a coolant pressure sensor in if I wanted to. That way I can monitor coolant pressure and just make sure if I were to be off-roading out in the desert, this little sensor port would be a coolant pressure sensor so that I can monitor coolant pressure via a little aftermarket gauge on the interior. And if the coolant pressure ever drops and I'm out off-roading, then I know that the coolant level is dropping on the it could potentially save your engine, right? Because we treat these things really rough. Uh, the cooling system, the hoses and everything, they can only handle so much, right? If you slam your radiator into a rock, well, you kind of want to know. <laughs> I'm going to set up my, um, my tripod and I'm going to start time-lapsing this. It's going to be a really cool, really straightforward install, but getting this off, I'm going to take this off, I'm going to put the studs back in, but this is going to be a little more difficult to remove than say this one, the Toyota OEM one, just because of how much thinner this is. All right, now if you look at these, like this is my one. This is the Honda K engine one. If you look at how much I had to grind off of this thing, it's, yeah, it's, it's held up for a year. It's really nice. Like this is the part that's sealed, right? Like it's been really good. It's, it's held really well. And uh, as you can see, like I put the little jiggly valve thing, like that's on the top. Actually, I took out that little jiggly valve. I think it might have bumped the housing. That might be why they don't have one here because they might have had the same problem that I had. Cause yeah, it looks like, and now that I'm thinking about it, I do remember taking out that jiggly valve. So yeah, but uh, I mean, look at, look at this. This is like how much I actually had to take off. But this is the main part that's sealed against the housing and it's sealed well. There's no signs of any leaks around it, just kind of on the bottom there, but I mean, it's actually not very much coolant. Uh, I guess whatever was down there uh, just dried up and formed its own little seal because that would have been down here along there. So, and I might just not have tightened up the, um, the two bolts because this, that stud that's on the inside bottom, like on the, the bottom, the very, because there's the two on the bottom and there's one on the top. So the one that's on this side is the hardest one to tighten with this setup. Um, I don't know if you saw like in my little time lapse, but I basically had to use this to loosen it because I was able to tighten it with a normal swivel when I put it on there, but it's difficult to get off. So if anyone out there in YouTube land decides to do this, yes, it holds up, but it is because of the thickness of this thing. I mean, look at this because of the thickness of it, it's, it's impossible to get this over the studs. You can't use longer studs with a, a nut. You have to use the length stud that's there, otherwise you can't get a tool on it. I had enough trouble getting the tool on it as it was. So this just slips right on. But um, if you're wondering what this is, if you skipped through my little part before, this is the little sleeve, <laughs> the sleeve that I made, which also, so in addition to this being, this was made for a Honda. It's billet aluminum, but it's the cheapest possible one that I could find made for a Honda. These are known to leak. Uh, this is a smaller diameter than the radiator hose, so I had to use the bike tube. It's shorter than the OEM one by about an inch and a quarter. So, and also it goes off at a slightly different angle. Like this points down this way where the OEM one points more down this way. It's still, it was able to, to work really well for a year. Held temperature, this never overheated. I never had any issues with it. The only thing Toyota about this was I, I force fitted a Toyota thermostat in here. So yeah, um, and these are just plugs after I pulled the sensors out that were monitoring everything. But this, the install is very straightforward as far as putting it back in. I mean, look, look at this, the, the way this goes on, put it in and boom, it's in, it's on. If this were OEM Toyota, it would go on just as just as easily. All you need is the three nuts, which I don't have near me because I just took these bolts out. So I have to grab three nuts. I'm gonna tighten this up and then put some coolant in the system. But yeah, I, I want the thermostat to, 
to be as close to the OEM one as possible. So I'm, I'm actually going to drill a tiny hole in the top of this thermostat because there's no little bypass hole where the jiggly valve would be. There's no little hole there to pass air bubbles through and, and whatnot. So uh, I am going to pull out this thermostat, drill a little hole there. But that's the only downside that I see to this actually is you, you need a little hole in the thermostat similar to how the stock one is. So if you look at the stock setup, there's a hole in the very top of the thermostat and it actually has a little jiggly valve in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little hole there. So I'm going to set this up just like the OEM one. So I'm gonna pop this out with my snap ring pliers, drill a hole there. So I got my three 10 millimeter nuts here. I, I drilled a little hole in the very top of this. Uh, it doesn't do much because of where the, um, where the housing is, it actually kind of blocks the hole. So yeah, but 10 millimeter nut number one, 10 millimeter nut number two. It's a very difficult nut to put on the stud. So don't drop it like I just did. Cause if you drop it, I don't know where it went. Oh, it's on the ground, Plinko. But yeah, this is incredibly difficult to get on just because you, you can't put it on a tool and expect to slide it in there. But that's that, now I just have to tighten it up, connect my hoses back. This is too fat of a swivel to get in there, which means I'm probably gonna have to use this. Now, if I were to guess the torque rating on these, um, I'm going to have the number popping up, but it's going to be probably like 70 inch pounds. So not very much. So if you are using a torque wrench to tighten this up, then you're going to have to be mindful of how, uh, how tight you get this. Tightening of my hand should do. Seems like that's about as tight as I can get that. And since this is, has so much leverage, I'm just getting it barely snug with this because I, I don't want to... Uh, you can get it pretty tight on this because it's billet aluminum. You don't have to worry about cracking plastic on this. So you, you could tighten it to tighter than what the, the Toyota torque specifications are. But at this point you risk, I don't know, possibly damaging the housing behind that. I don't know how much PSI that cast aluminum is, is expected to hold, but it can't be as high as what the billet aluminum is. All right, I just turned off the FJ Cruiser. It runs very well. I don't see any signs of leakage looking around here. I was building full pressure and actually, it, I could hear the thermostat click open because it's in this, uh, it's in this, this aluminum, the um, billet aluminum housing. So it's what it sounded like. Around the time it was at operating temperature, I heard a very loud, distinct click that came from right there. So yeah, uh, full pressure and the hoses well, good pressure in the hoses, not full pressure because, yeah. But I, I have good pressure. It's, it's up to operating temperature. I had it running for a little while. It didn't overheat, didn't see any signs of leaking. And yeah, it's, uh, it seems like it's going really well. So as I said, if you wanna follow my other videos, I have the video that's on this Tacoma tow package install, that both the alternator from the tow package and this oil cooler with that water inlet. So I have that video if you want to watch it. I have the video on installing the aftermarket radiator. So now I have all aluminum pieces in my cooling system. So it gives me a lot of peace of mind. The only thing I kind of don't like is I'm still using that Motorrad uh, inside thermostat, but it's, uh, it's Motorrad. They're a really good company. They are a really good company. I would prefer Toyota OEM, but uh, this, if I had to weigh the differences between Toyota OEM, plastic, with you know that susceptibility of to, to breaking and, and everything or the billet aluminum housing with the motor rad uh, inside thermostat then yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go with that so yeah so check that out and also if you want to follow the build progress on this i'll have those links in the description like i said i'll be putting up this video on this install along with uh, me talking a lot about w the way forward with this and how I've been building that, what's been going on with it. So thanks a lot for watching though, guys. Good luck installing your billet thermostat housing if you end up buying one, highly recommend it. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and God bless you guys.